So continuing on the relative clauses lesson, and I'd like to continue on the non-defining clauses. So just to uh, repeat um, myself here, uh, non-defining clauses, so it's non-defining versus defining. So it does not define. It does not actually give you the necessary info that you must have in the sentence. So we say that it gives us additional information. Yeah, it gives you more information, but it's unnecessary, okay? And very importantly that you need to remember it's separated by uh, commas or comma if it's at the end of the sentence. Now, it's always good to look at examples, so let's look at the three examples here. Number one, we invited Dr. Smith. We've got a comma here. Who is an, out, an outstanding specialist in COVID-19, which we all know by now, um, the coronavirus in 2019, to speak to our students here, okay? So, uh, we invited Dr. Smith. Uh, since it's Dr. Smith, um, it's his name, and uh, we probably know who he is already, okay? So here, uh, this clause in the middle, it's actually non-defining as we can actually take it out, and that would make sense. We invited Dr. Smith to speak to our students, okay? So let's put back the non-defining clause here. Now, number two, Steve Jobs, you probably know who he is already, um, died in 2011. Now, all this in the middle here, that is non-defining clause. Now, let's read it. Whose name is for most people associated with Apple, all right? So, Steve Jobs, whose name is for most people associated, associated with Apple, died in 2011. Now, let's check if this is a non-defining. Let's read the sentence. If we take out the unnecessary info with the commas, okay? I always remember it with two commas, so you can take it both out, okay? Use the two commas, take it out, okay? So Steve Jobs died in 2011. Uh, it makes sense. It's clear, okay? It can stand alone. Now, let's look at number three. My MacBook which I purchased last week, broke down yesterday. Now here, again, let's do this again, take it out. My MacBook broke down yesterday. It makes total sense and I understand what you're talking about. You're talking about your MacBook, well, my MacBook, you understand what I'm talking about. It's my MacBook and it broke down yesterday, okay? But I'm giving you more information on this. You know, when did I purchase this? Last week, okay? Um, of course, this, has not happened to me, um, <laughs> so I am not saying that MacBooks are, you know, ease, uh, can be broken easily. It's just an example. Uh, moving on, I'd like to uh, give you a bit more information on prepositions with uh, relative pronouns, okay? So if you look at um, the four examples here, okay, um, you can see that in this sentence, so the gentleman about whom they spoke was from Manchester, okay? Uh, so this is the relative pronoun here, okay? Um, so they were speaking about somebody. So speaking about, the preposition is necessary. Um, now, where do we put the preposition? So they were speaking about the gentleman okay so there are different ways you can do this so i've given you four ways here so number one way is very formal if you hear people speak like this they're very formal okay so the gentleman about whom so the preposition plays before the uh, relative pronoun which is the whom here this is very formal okay second way uh, would be the gentleman whom they spoke about so now the preposition is placed after okay uh, the relative pronoun here um, it comes after later on in the relative clause so the gentleman whom because that, uh, he's the object of their their talk here okay the gentleman whom they spoke about 
was from Manchester. This is still very formal because of the use of whom here. Um, number three, if we change the relative pronoun to who, it's less formal. And also the preposition could be placed uh, after uh, the relative pronoun. So uh, the gentleman who they spoke about was from Manchester. This is less formal, okay? And the gentleman that they spoke about was from Manchester. This is a bit more informal if you use uh, that here, okay? Um, in this video, I will not talk about reduced relative clauses, but this is what just happened here uh, since this is the uh, object of their talking, okay, the of the sentence here. Um, therefore, we could actually reduce the relative clause and omit this um, uh, relative pronoun here, okay? But this is for another lesson. Um, so just to recap, if you want to be formal, okay, then the preposition actually comes before the pronoun right here. It, called, it can also come after the pronoun, okay? But of course you would use the whom uh, as your relative um, pronoun. If you look at this table here, formal, very formal style, you have preposition, whom, or which, okay? Uh, also, if you use whom, you can use the preposition afterwards, but it's still very formal when you use whom, okay? Uh, if you want to be less formal, you're talking to your friends, you don't want to sound like strange, sound like a professor, okay? Then the preposition actually um, comes after, later on in the relative clause here, okay? Um, if you look at this chart, uh, less formal style would be you use who instead of whom, which, and then preposition would be after, uh, follow would follow afterwards, and also that, and sometimes it's zero meaning you don't need the that if it's a reduced relative clause. Okay. Now, one thing I want to highlight, I want to ask you, okay, really think about it. So that versus which, um, since. Are they interchangeable? Since, look at which, pro, the relative pronoun here, used for things and animals, that can also be used for things and animals, besides for people, okay? So are they actually interchangeable? I would say no, okay? So I, wanna, I want you to look at two uh, examples. So the first comparison, my MacBook, I'm using the same example as I used previously, my MacBook, comma, which I purchased last week, broke down yesterday. So this is a non-defining um, relative clause. So can we actually say my MacBook, since this is an object, can we use that after the comma? Since this is um, non-defining relative clause, we could take this whole thing out, okay? No, the answer, remember this cross here, okay? So we cannot do that because that, cannot be, uh, it cannot follow after a comma, okay? So maybe you want to stick to which if you think it's hard to remember, which you can use a comma or you can, um, it doesn't have to follow a comma if it's a depend, depending, um, defining, or a defining relative clause. Now comparison number two, um, let's read it. The paper to which so we're talking about adding a preposition before the relative pronoun. The paper to which he referred was well written. Okay, so the paper is the object, okay, um, to which he referred to. Can we do that uh, with the relative pronoun that, the person to that? So we have this preposition before that. No, it is not accepted. Okay, it's not acceptable. So the conclusion is that this relative pronoun cannot actually um, be preceded by a comma or preposition, saying meaning that it cannot have a comma or a preposition right before it. 
Okay, it cannot follow a comma, cannot follow a preposition. Okay, so I would say that in which you got to be careful. A lot of students actually make uh, these mistakes when they're trying to create non defining uh, relative clauses. They sometimes use that, which is not correct. Okay, so just to recap relative clauses, what are they? They give additional information about a noun that they usually follow in the, the sentence. Um, why do we use relative clauses? It is to create more interesting and more complex sentences. Of course, you want to sound more fluent when you're speaking um, about a person or thing. Okay, You don't want to repeat the noun again and again. Um, it also helps you describe things that you don't know how to call. Okay, If you're um, in an environment that everyone's like actually English speaking and you're like, oh, what is that? thing that you know you need you use for a certain purpose and then the person will be able to hopefully will be able to tell you the name of it so you learn a word a vocab okay so hopefully you'll have some um, more awareness of relative clauses and hopefully um, you can use them in your writing all right bye bye